Hello, this is Rebecca Bogard, and today I'm going to show you how to use No Red Ink. No Red Ink is a freemium platform for teaching grammar to K-12 students. The free version still offers many useful features and a wide variety of topics, though of course the paid version does open up a lot more options. This is a great platform if you're a teacher who has students with a wide range of grammar skills because it lets you assign work for individuals as well as whole classes, and it also requires students to demonstrate mastery before they can finish the assignment, which, coming from personal experience, is a great feature to have. So, in order to create your account, first you need to go to noredink.com, and it's going to look like this. So, as you can see, you're going to want to click on the bright yellow button that says sign up for free. Now, the setup process is really simple. You'll either click I'm a teacher or I'm a student. This is how your students will go to create their account when you have them sign up. But for now, let's click on I'm a teacher. And you can sign up with Google, Clever, or fill in your own information down here. So once you create your account, it's going to look something like this. And the next step is to add your students. So you can see right here we have a button for adding new students which gives you several options. Now, I find the easiest way to do this is to give them a class code. So mine is hilarious money 98 and all you have to do is either take your kids to the computer lab or if you've got computers in your classroom, have them go to no writing just like you did, click on I'm a student, and then it will eventually ask them for a class code, which they simply need to type into the text box and click continue until they get to the next step of the setup process. Now it will also ask them to choose some interests that they have, so it gives them a wide array of options from TV shows to video games to movies that they can pick and then No Red Ink will use those interests to create practice sentences for them, which is kind of a cool feature. So anyways, uh, once they have created their accounts, then you will see your classes in your home screen just like my existing account here. So you can see I have English 7S 2017 2018. And from here it's easy to assign work, view assignments, or view student data based on previous assignments that have been completed. So the first thing you probably want to do once you've created a class is give your students a diagnostic so you can see where they're at and what topics they need to work on. Fortunately, this is really easy when you first create your account. As you can see, the only other option here in this box is to create a diagnostic. So let's click on that. And when you signed up, you already had to put your grade level. So it will automatically give you a pre-made diagnostic if you'd like to use that. Or you can also make your own custom diagnostic and it will lead you through the steps. Once your students have taken that diagnostic, it's pretty cool. It actually will show you uh, what they need to work on as a whole. So if I go to my account, let's click on view assignments. That's where I can see any assignments that have already been completed or are currently in progress. You will notice down here is my first diagnostic test. So if you click on this button here, we can see how my students did. And you can easily see a list of grammar topics as well as a bar graph showing which of my students were struggling, beginning, approaching, proficient, or if they didn't complete that part of the diagnostic. So it automatically ranks them for you in terms of which topics the class as a whole needs to study the most, all the way down to the ones that they performed best at from the diagnostic. So the nice thing about this is that if you look over to the right, you can quickly click Start Teaching, and it will allow you to choose several options. I'm going to assign practice, and this will let me customize my assignment here. So first of all, if you have multiple classes, you can click which ones you want to assign it to. I only have one, so I'm just going to click to assign it to them. And then over here, you can choose if you want to assign it to all of your students or only some of them. Here you can put in the start date, when it's due, including the time, give it an assignment, and then if you'd like it to be graded, you can assign points here. 
I usually allow late submissions, but you don't have to. Uh, and over on the side, you can see how long your practice is estimated to take. So right now, this is 10 to 20 minutes. That's pretty short. So I think that's a good assignment. And then I would click Assign when I'm ready to go. You can also create assignments by going back to your home page and clicking Assignments at the top. And then at the top, you can click Create New Assignment, and it will give you more options this time. So you can create another diagnostic, practice assignment, or even a quiz if you like. I'm going to do a practice assignment. Let's go with active and passive voice. So I'll just click a few of the topics I'd like to cover. And then once I'm done selecting, I'll go down here. Once again, you can see the amount of time that it's estimated my students to take. I'm going to name this active voice. Start this tomorrow and make it do a little over a week. 20 points is good. And I'm going to allow late submissions. Oh, forgot to click on the class I'm assigning it to. There we go. So now, one of the nice features is that you can actually see what this is gonna look like from your student's perspective, which I find really helpful as a teacher because I need to know what issues they might encounter, especially the first time that they do an assignment. So to get to that, we click on more actions over here, and then it will allow us to preview we can see just what the assignment will look like. So one of the things you'll notice off the bat is that there are three little circles here. That's because we chose three different topics for this assignment. So I always make sure to tell my students that all of these are part of that one assignment. Otherwise, you'll inevitably have some students who only complete one of the three or more topics and then think that they're done and get a low score on the assignment. So let's begin with the first topic here. You can click on lesson if you want to learn more about the grammar topic or you can just start with the practice. And No Red Ink offers a variety of questions depending on the topic. So this is just a small representation of the types of questions that your students will see. But in this case, it tells us to select the active voice verb in the sentence below. And Harry Potter was one of the interests I selected here. So it, as you can see, it's adding it to this sentence uh, for us to practice. So here's the active voice verb. I can click Submit Answer. And then it will allow me to go to the next question. If I get a question wrong, it's going to require me to get three more right before I can move on to the next topic. So thereby requiring students to achieve mastery um, before they're actually able to finish the assignment. Now, there are a lot more things you can do with No Red Ink, especially as a teacher and with the free version. But hopefully this gives you a good start as to how to create an account, get your students set up for the first time, and create your first diagnostic and assignment. Thanks for listening. Hope this helps.